So I'm Michael Mann. Uh, I am a professor at the University of Pennsylvania where I teach in the Department of Earth and Environmental Science. Uh, I'm also a climate researcher and uh, I recently wrote a, a book called Our Fragile Moment which is about the climate crisis and it's about the lessons that we can learn from the past. Uh, when we look at past Earth history, what does it tell us about where we are today uh, and the challenge we face in addressing the climate crisis? One of the challenges um, is uh, doomism, this idea that it's too late to do anything about the problem. If we truly believe that there's nothing we can do, then it potentially leads us down a path of inaction and disengagement. It's almost indistinguishable from denial, whether you deny that climate change is real or you deny that we can do anything about it. Uh, it potentially leads us down that path of disengagement. And so it's important to understand that there is urgency, but there's also agency. It's still possible for us to prevent the worst consequences of climate change. One of the lessons that uh, we learn when we look at past climates, uh, past extinction events, for example, is that the primary factor behind uh, these events in many cases was a rapid input of greenhouse gases of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere that caused dramatic warming uh, and that posed a challenge for living things. Now today we are increasing the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere far more rapidly than in any of these past events. Uh, the rate of warming is far greater in, in these past events. Now sometimes the doomers uh, the doomists, those who say it's too late to do anything, will look at those events and they'll say these past uh, natural extinction events uh, were caused by rapid warming, uh, but there was uh, a, a rapid release of methane uh, that was trapped in the, the permafrost or uh, in the ocean bottom. And that release of methane is a self-reinforcing feedback loop that just causes more warming and then you lose more methane uh, and you get a runaway warming scenario. And they'll say, that's happening today in the Arctic because we've warmed up the Arctic and it's releasing this methane and all life is going to be extinct on this planet in a decade no matter what we do. Now that's not true. Um, and it turns out there isn't a large amount of methane yet that's escaping from the permafrost. If we continue to warm the planet, then that could be in play. And by the way, in those past extinction events, there wasn't a runaway uh, methane-driven warming. There was just primarily the warming from the carbon dioxide. So if anything, those past extinction events tell us that the driver is the greenhouse effect from the carbon dioxide. And if we stop polluting the atmosphere, with carbon dioxide pollution, with carbon pollution from fossil fuel burning and other activities, then we will stop the warming of the planet and we can prevent crossing into, uh, crossing thresholds uh, beyond which we will exceed our adaptive capacity as a civilization. So the bottom line is when we look to the past, it's reason for urgency because rapid warming does present a challenge to living things, uh, including today, to us. But what we also learn is that we can stop that warming if we stop polluting the atmosphere. The difference today is that it's us. It's not a natural release from massive uh, explosive volcanism. It's the burning of fossil fuels. And if we stop doing that, then we can stop the warming of the planet and we can stay within our adaptive capacity. We can preserve what I call our fragile moment.